Can we begin? Yes, Gurudev. Well, I need to. I need to be able to show the PowerPoint. Okay. Uh, Sakirni Harini Madhavi. She need to. Yes. Yes, Maharaj. I think you can do it now. You can do it now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tesmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavati Paschacha Deshatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasati Gaur Bhaktavanda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare. So we welcome everyone to our ongoing study of the Bhagavad Gita. This evening we're looking, going to look at chapter number eight. And of course the, the lectures are... The lectures are dedicated to His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, Founder Acharya of International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Gitaya Pushtakam Yatra Nitya Patas Javartate Tatra Sarvani Tirtani Prayagdini Bhutale Prayagadini Bhutale from the Vaishnavya Tantra Sara. All the holy places in this universe, such as Prayag, are eternally present wherever the Gita, the eternal book of divine song, is present. I'll, I'll give Bhagavad Gita chapter 8, Attaining the Supreme. We're going to hear. So, chapter 8 actually begins with Arjuna asking questions to Lord Krishna. And one of the questions, which we're going to be looking at more in detail, was about how could one no Krishna at the time of death. So here's how Krishna answers. First of all, text number five. Antakale chamame vas maranmakvakale varam ya prayati samad bhavam Yatnastya atrisamsaya. And whoever at the end of his life quits his body remembering me alone at once attains my nature. Of this there is no doubt. <laughs> So you can see in the illustration, Grandfather Bhishma on his bed of arrows, 
preparing to leave the body. Grandfather Bhishma left his body at Kurukshetra at, after the battle of Kurukshetra. And before leaving his body, he spent many days because he had a special benediction that he could maintain his life as long as he wanted. And so he, he was on this bed of arrows and he was giving instruction. He instructed Maharaj Yudhisthira in the duties of the king and how to rule properly. And uh, Lord Krishna also came there. And just like in a similar manner, Haridas Thakur gave up his body. Haridas Thakur gave up his body at Jagannath Puri when Lord Chaitanya and the other devotees came and they were performing kirtan around him. So generally this is the system for devotees in the, this Kali Yuga that when we depart, the devotees depart, we like to leave surrounded by devotees chanting the holy name. And just a few days ago, we saw how His Grace uh, Sripad Pankajangari Prabhu left his body here in Mayapur with devotees chanting the holy name. So Lord Krishna describes in this verse uh, that what we need to do if we want to actually come to be with Krishna in the next life. He says at the end of the life we have to remember him. We have to think of it. Thinking of him means remembering him. So we have to practice this throughout her life and then at the end of life it will be natural to think of Krishna. Of course, here in this verse, Lord Krishna said, remembering me alone. <laughs> we have to only think of Krishna, don't think of anyone else. So it becomes a quite a challenge for all of us. We have so many attachments. But if we practice now, then we can prepare. We prepare ourselves for leaving the body. And 
và thiền lang. We all know one day we have to leave the body. Là đối con cả xác con đi là vào vấn đề này là sẽ không. So we have we have to prepare ourselves for that time. Just like you go to college, you go to study, you know there's going to be an exam at the end of the year. So you have to prepare for these exams. You have, to, and the best way to prepare is you work regularly throughout the year. And when you work regularly throughout the year, then at the end of the year, it's not difficult for the exam. But if you haven't been working all year and then it comes time for the exam, then it becomes very frantic and you get very worried because you know you're not prepared. So the same is true with our life, that we have to prepare ourselves for the final exam which comes at the end of life. And we have to practice fixing our mind on Krishna. We have to be able to remember Krishna even in difficult situations. And the best way to remember him is by chanting his holy name. And of course, we also have Krishna's pastimes, Krishna's Leela. We have we have many different names of Krishna in the form of beautiful songs. So we have to take advantage of all of these facilities to train our mind to think of Krishna. Okay, then the next verse describes whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body, O son of Kunti, that state he will attain without fail. Yeah, if at the time of death, if our mind is absorbed in thinking of a dog, next life we may become a dog. And the famous example is there in Srimad Bhagavatam how Bharat Maharaj had gone to the Himalayas renouncing everything, but he became a deer. Somehow he had been doing meditation in the Himalayas and because he was on his own with no association, he became attached to a deer. So association is very important. It's a great help to us in remembering Krishna. 
เพราะการพบผ่านสมาคมถือว่าเป็นสิ่งสําคัญที่จะช่วยให้เราในระลึกถึงพระราชา We have many things. Bharat Maharaj got distracted by a deer. We get distracted by many other things. บารมาราณะคะเขาเนี่ยแค่ถูกรบกวนเนี่ยจิตใจโดนรบกวนด้วยกว่าแต่ว่าสำหรับเราแล้วเนี่ยเราโดนเราโดนหลายสิ่งหลายอย่างมารบกวนจิตใจเรา We may not be we may not become attached to a deer but we become attached to cars become we become attached to uh, telephones and so many other things จะไม่ได้มีความยึดติดกับกวางอะไรอย่างนี้แต่เราอาจจะยึดติดกับสิ่งของอย่างเช่นรถหรือโทรศัพท์มือถือ So we have to be very careful where our consciousness is being what we're remembering in our mind what we're thinking of เพราะฉะนั้นเราจะต้องมีความระมัดระวังเป็นอย่างยิ่งกับสิ่งที่เราคิดสิ่งที่เราจำหรือว่าและลึกถึงอยู่เสมอ Because whatever we remember at the time of leaving the body, that's where we will go in the next life. We like to be able to chant Hare Krishna at the time of leaving the body. เราต้องสามารถสวดฮาริกริชนาได้ในขณะที่เราทิ้งลา We like to be able to think of somehow remember Krishna เราจะต้องคิดว่าให้เราเนี่ยอยู่ในสถานการณ์ที่สามารถและลึกถึงคริชนาได้ So uh, it's a big test for all of us อันนี้ถือว่าเป็นบททดสอบครั้งยิ่งใหญ่สำหรับพวกเราทุกคน And we have to practice. We have to prepare ourselves for that test. Okay, going on the next verse, text number seven. Krishna says, "Therefore, Arjuna, you should always think of me in the form of Krishna, and at the same time carry out your prescribed duty of fighting." With your activities dedicated to me and your mind and intelligence fixed on me, you will attain me without doubt. ท่านก็ทรงตอบต่อนะคะว่าฉะนั้นโอ้อรจุนะเธอควรระลึกถึงข้าในรูปลักษณ์กริชนาอยู่เสมอและในขณะเดียวกันก็ปฏิบัติหน้าที่ที่ได้หน้าที่ในการต่อสู้ที่ได้กําหนดไว้โดยอุทิศกิจกรรมต่างๆของเธอแด่ข้าจิตใจและปัญญาตั้งมั่นอยู่ที่ข้าเธอจะบรรลุถึงข้าโดยไม่ต้องสงสัย So we see from this verse that Krishna is not encouraging Arjuna to stop all his activities เราสามารถเห็นจากสรุปนี้ได้ว่า Krishna เนี่ยไม่ต้องการให้อาจุนะเนี่ยหยุดทำกิจกรรม He tells Arjuna carry on with your duty of fighting But at the same time, always think of me. So we should understand, it's not going to be the same for everyone. Some people are thinking of their their dog, and they're they're thinking of their house, and they're thinking of their their family, and somebody else is thinking of Krishna. They're going to get different results. So how can we, how can we think of Krishna? We may say, well, I've never seen Krishna. How can I think of him? So we have to hear about Krishna. We have to hear from the scriptures. We hear about Krishna from books like Srimad Bhagavatam, and we hear from Krishna here in the Bhagavad Gita. 
เรานะคะฟังเกี่ยวกับกฤษณาจากอย่างเช่นจากหนังสือสรีมาบาคาวตามหรือว่าบาคาวัตพระคาวัตคีตานะคะอย่างหนึ่งเช่นหนังสือเล่มนี้ We have to hear about Krishna's lila, his different pastimes, and his different energies. And his different incarnations. Krishna has many, many, many incarnations. And it's important for us to hear about Krishna's activities. We have to hear about how Krishna creates everything. Krishna is behind the whole material world. So, Lord Krishna is saying we should dedicate our activities to Him. We're all working for some reason. We should a devotee works for Krishna. And Lord Krishna mentions, he said, we should fix our mind and intelligence on him. So in the beginning, we use the mind. To have the desire to think of Krishna, to dedicate everything to Krishna. And then the intelligence helps us to fix ourselves in this way, to be very uh, careful, not to give up, and to be steady and maintain that mood of dedicating our activities to Krishna. So this is Krishna's instruction to all of us. We have to think of him. Don't forget Krishna, and at the same time work. Going ahead to verse number 15. After attaining me, the great souls who are yogis in devotion never return to this temporary world which is full of miseries because they have attained the highest perfection. So Lord Krishna is describing that the, the, the pure-hearted souls who are pu pure in devotion they will go to be with Krishna. They're not going to come back to this material world. And the reason why they don't come back is given in this verse. Because they, they know this material world is a temporary place full of misery. The nature of the soul is eternal. We don't like these temporary places. So 
just like we take birth in a particular family or country and you know we become attached to it we don't want to leave we're thinking this is my family my country my home but we're forced to leave it. We're dragged out of it. So it's very painful, it's very miserable to have to leave a place, to leave people and family we're attached to. And so that's why the great souls don't come back to the material world. They think, why should I go back there? It's only suffering there. Very little drops of happiness and a lot of pain. So you can see from the illustration, the lotus flower represents the living entities in the Goloka Vrindavan, in the topmost planet in the spiritual world. And then all of these other yellow uh, uh, round objects, they represent Vaikuntha planets. And in the bottom right corner, that's the material world. And you can see Mahavishnu laying there on the Kosho Ocean. So there's many more living entities in the spiritual world than what's here in the material world. There's an infinite number of planets in the spiritual world and they're, it's, it's all full with the living entities, blissful, pure devotees who are enjoying life in the spiritual world. And we are like the people here in, the, in that bottom right corner, that's like the jailhouse or the prison house, you know. We are in the prison of the material world. Yeah, we're prisoners and we have, we, we have a, the prison uniform in the form of a material body. And we are also uh, in pri we're prisoners because they have, they have chains on us in the form of the modes of nature, Rajagun, Tamagun, they're controlling us. So like this, we're, we're in the minority, we're the small number of people in the material world. There's many more souls in the spiritual world. We should be eager to go there, to go to the spiritual world. And when we go there, we should want to stay there, never come back.
แล้วเมื่อไรก็แล้วแต่ที่เราได้ไปที่นั่นเราควรที่จะอยากอยู่ที่นั่นโดยไม่หวังที่จะกลับมาที่นี่โอเค next verse number sixteen Abrahma Bhuvana Loka Punar Avartano Arjuna Mamma Paitya Tukontea Punar Janmana Vidyate From the highest planet in the material world down to the lowest, all are places of misery wherein repeated birth and death take place. But one who attains to my abode, O son of Kunti, never takes birth again. จากดาวเคราะห์สูงสุดในโลกวัตถุลงไปยังดาวเคราะห์ต่ำสุดทั้งหมดเป็นสถานที่แห่งความทุกข์ที่มีการเกิดและการตายซ้ำซากแต่ผู้ที่บรรลุถึงพระตำหนักของข้าโอโอรุพนาคุณทีจะไม่กลับมาเกิดอีก So there are many different planets in the material world, and the very topmost planet is the planet of Lord Brahma. And we are in the Earth planet, which is about in the middle. There's 14 different levels of planets, and we are about in number seven in the in the list of different planets. So we're not the highest and we're not the lowest. We're in the middle of the universe. But all of these planets, from the highest to the lowest, they're all places of misery. Sometimes people think about going to heaven. They think I, I want to go to heaven, but in heaven there's also death. There's also it's also temporary there. You may be able to enjoy for some time, but you can't stay there forever. In heaven, there are many demigods, and they enjoy a long life, and they have mystic powers, and they're very intelligent. But they also worry. About having to leave that place and having to go down to the lower planets. Even, even on the topmost planet, Lord Brahma, he also worries about his death coming. So you can see the illustrations. On the top left, some is taking birth, and then on the top right, the old man got old, and the bottom left, somebody's diseased, and then the bottom right, somebody's dying. So the so this is the nature of the material world. There's birth, there's old age, there's disease, there's death. But if we can get out of this place, get out of the material world, and go to Krishna's abode, you never have to suffer these things. In the spiritual world, there is eternal life. So we should be fascinated to hear about the spiritual world. 
ราะฉะนั้นเราควรที่จะมีความอยากรู้อยากเห็นเกี่ยวกับความรู้ที่ของโลกทิพย์ We should be thinking how oh, I want to go there I'm very eager to go there แล้วก็มีความอยากที่จะไปโอ้โหโลกทิพย์ยากไปจังเลยมีความอยากที่จะไปเหมือนคนที่ฟังเรื่องของลอสแอนเจลิสหรือฮาวายหรือประเทศแบบนี้ไปไกลๆเขาคิดว่าโอ้ฉันอยากจะไปที่นั่นไปดูประตูดังนั้นเราควรจะสนใจกับสังคมโลกที่เป็นสังคมที่เป็นสังคมแล้วก็อาจจะมีความต้องการนี้ก็อยากไปที่นั่นนะคะในลักษณะเดียวกันเราก็ควรที่จะฟังเกี่ยวกับโลกทิพย์มากๆแล้วก็พัฒนาความต้องการภายในใจที่อยากจะไปที่นั่น But we should, we should want to go there to the spiritual world and stay there we shouldn't want to have to come back แต่สิ่งสำคัญก็คือเราควรที่จะต้องการไปที่โลกทิพย์ก็อยู่ที่นั่นโดยไม่มีความปรารถนาที่จะกลับมาที่นี่ so just like when they were going to the moon you know there was a lot of talk about spaceships going to the moon and then the future they said we'll take people to the moon and so somebody was saying to Prabhupada oh I would like to go to the moon and Prabhupada said really you want to go and stay there And they said, "No, I just want to go and come back." And so that mood of going there and seeing everything coming back, Prabhupada said, that is the enjoying mood. If we want to go to Krishna's abode, we have to have the mood of service to be the servant. That's the sign of real love. Do you really love when you really love Krishna? You want to serve him. And so, to go into the spiritual world. We want to enter Krishna's abode. We have to have that qualification. We have to have love, and love means we want to do service. You cannot go to the spiritual world just to have a look and come back. That's not good. Okay, so here's the last verse of the eighth chapter, text number twenty-eight. A person who accepts the path of devotional service is not bereft of the results derived from studying the Vedas, performing sacrifices, undergoing austerities. Giving charity or pursuing philosophical and fruitive activities, simply by performing devotional service, he attains all these, and at the end, he reaches the supreme eternal abode. ข้อสุดท้ายของบทนี้นะคะบอกว่าบุคคลผู้รับเอาวิธีแห่งการอนุทนเสียสละรับใช้มาปฏิบัติจะไม่สูญเสียผลที่ได้รับจากการศึกษาคำพีพระเวทปฏิบัติวิธีบูชาปฏิบัติความเพียรให้ทานหรือแสวงหาปรัชญาความรู้และกิจกรรมเพื่อผลทางวัตถุเพียงแต่ปฏิบัติการอุทิศตนเสียสละรับใช้เขาจะบรรลุถึงสิ่งเหล่านี้ทั้งหมดและในที่สุดจะบรรลุถึงพระตำหนักนิรันดรสูงสุด So Lord Krishna is describing here the the teachings from this 
seventh and eighth chapter in this one verse. He says, you just, you just simply have to do devotional service, bhakti yoga, and you get the, all these other results automatically. Hmm. Studying the Vedas. Devotees study, just like we're studying Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is essence of the Vedas. And on the, then performing sacrifice, doing yagya, that is also there within Krishna consciousness. You do bhakti yoga, we do many yagyas. And then undergoing austerities, we are as the, in, in Krishna consciousness, the austerity is practice for regulative principles. That is a great austerity for people in the Kali Yuga. Don't eat meat, fish and eggs. Don't gamble. Don't associate with the opposite sex illicitly. Marriage is allowed. Ma nothing wrong with marriage. That is religious. But outside of marriage is illicit. And no, int no don't take any intoxication. Devotees don't even drink tea or coffee. So this is austerity. By being in bhakti yoga, you're, we're automatically doing austerity. And then giving charity. Devotees regularly give charity. We distribute prasadam many times. So simply by practicing Krishna consciousness, a devotee gets the benefit of all of these activities. And the result is at the end, he can go to the supreme abode, he can go into the spiritual world. The, the eternal abode, the spiritual world, that is our real home. We are thinking our home is here in this material world, but this is a miserable place. This is not the real home. We make a home for some time, then we have to leave it. We have to just, we all die and have to go take birth again some other place. But if we go to the spiritual world, we can stay there forever. We have our eternal home there. Of course, we have to get rid of this material body. We have to develop a spiritual body. So we want you to understand 
What is devotional service? Right, right. We've been speaking bhakti yoga. Bhakti yoga is so good. Everything's in bhakti yoga. What actually is bhakti yoga? So this is described for us actually a great devotee named Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad, a young boy, he was a very great devotee and he described what is Bhakti Yoga in the Srimad Bhagavatam. He said, first of all, hearing and chanting about the holy name, the transcendental holy name, form, qualities, paraphernalia and pastimes of Lord Vishnu. This is Bhakti Yoga. So hearing and chanting is the beginning of bhakti yoga. That's the base of the foundation. We want to develop bhakti yoga, we have to carefully hear and chant. And then if we have a good foundation, then you can make a nice building on top. Then after hearing and chanting, then it will become easy for us to remember about Lord Vishnu and all of his name and form and pastimes. Then the next item is serving the lotus feet of the Lord. Right? We should be the servant of the Lord. We shouldn't try to be the master. We should be willing to serve. Then, offering the Lord worship with six, 16 types of paraphernalia. And then, offering prayers to the Lord. Becoming his servant and and then considering the Lord one's best friend. And finally, surrendering everything unto him. Meaning to serve him with our body, mind and words. So these nine processes are accepted as pure devotional service. One who has dedicated his life to the service of Krishna through these nine methods should be understood to be the most learned person. And he has complete knowledge. So here you can see different devotees who achieve perfection through these different nine processes. 
ามารถเห็นตัวอย่างตาวกนะคะที่มีความชำนาญในทางในก้าววิธีนี้ on the first in the first picture here on the top left we have Maharaj Parikshit who is hearing and he's hearing from Sukadeva Goswami so Sukadeva Goswami is doing the chanting and Maharaj Parikshit is hearing ท่านแรกนะคะชื่อว่ามหาราชปริชิตนะคะท่านเนี่ยได้ท่านเนี่ยรังฟังสุกเดวบุสวามีอยู่นะ And here you can see Lord Chaitanya with the devotees and they're doing kirtan they're chanting แล้วก็รูปที่สองนะเราก็เห็นสาวกของรองเจ้าเจตัญญาได้นะคะพวกเขาในกำลังสวดมนต์กัน And here, that this picture, the next picture is Pralad Maharaj. Pralad Maharaj is here, and he's instructing all of these other boys. He's telling them all that they should remember, they should remember the Lord. And here in Lord Rama's picture, you can see Hanuman there kneeling at the feet of Lord Ram. So Hanuman is the servant of Lord Ramachandra. Hanuman's perfection is in service, doing service for Lord Rama. And here on the bottom left. You have the devotee worshiping the deity. This is performing worship of the Lord. You can become perfect by doing that. We saw Pankajangari Prabhu worship the deities for 50 years here in Mayapur. So he gone, he's gone to the spiritual world to worship there now. Here in this picture, the next picture is uh, Queen Kunti offering prayers to Lord Krishna. And on the bottom picture here, you see Lakshmi massaging the lotus feet of Lord Vishnu. So by serving the lotus feet, she gets perfection. And here is Lord Krishna with all of his friends, and these these boys, they're all getting their perfection as being the friend of Krishna. And then finally here on the bottom right we have. Lord Vamana Dev, he's taking three steps of land to cover everything, to cover the universe, and he's taking away everything from Bali Maharaj. Bali Maharaj surrendered everything. So you can do any one of these nine processes and get perfection. But we're told it's very difficult to surrender everything, and it's also very difficult to become Krishna's friend.
So the, the initial stage of devotional service is to concentrate on hearing and chanting. Then gradually the other processes will come. Here's a quotation from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Of all the different spiritual practices, the nine forms of bhakti, sravanam, kirtanam, etc., are the best because they have great potency to deliver Krishna an ecstatic love for him. อันนี้นะคะมาจากไซตันเนี่ยไซตันมริตานะคะบอกว่าในเอ่อบรรดาเอ่อวิธีปฏิบัติบรรลุถึงคริชนาได้ทําให้ได้รับความรักของคริชนาได้ออฟดิสนามบรรลุถึงคริชนาได้ทําให้ได้รับความรักของคริชนาได้ออฟดิสนามบรรลุถึงคริ
So that's generally the practice. When somebody passes from the world, there will be kirtan and there will be readings from the scriptures. And this way will help to pacify the agitated mind that we are disturbed at having lost somebody who is dear to us and who is near to us. Yes. Any other question? Well, it will depend a lot on the attitude when we are singing the songs. It can be prayer if we sing the songs in a prayerful mood. Certainly some of us, some of the songs are very prayerful songs. And Srila Prabhupada explained to us, he said, when we sing these songs, it's very important that we should know the meaning. And so often when we sing a song, we may sing some devotional song, afterwards then we would speak about the song and we would explain what the song was about. Hmm. So generally these songs are prayers, yes, they gen generally are, but sometimes, you know, some songs are very happy and joyful. Just like we have songs which we sing in the morning, morning songs, you know. When we sing songs like Udilo Aruna Purabhavadgi, you know that, uh, that now the sun is rising, wake up sleeping soul, it's time to get up and chant the holy name. And so they're not exactly uh, so prayerful, but you know, you could say it's a prayer. It depends a lot on how, what is our particular attitude in singing this song. Just like we have Govinda prayers. When we greet the deities, we play the Govinda prayers. It's from the Brahma Samhita. So we're singing the, Bra the songs of Lord Brahma. And so those are prayers. Prayer doesn't mean that you have to ask for something. Prayer can be just simply a glorification of the Lord. 
ถวายความปรารถนาหรือว่าถวายบทมนต์เนี่ยอาจจะไม่ได้เป็นแบบว่าขอพรให้ตัวเองเนี่ยได้อะไรแต่อาจจะเป็นในเชิงที่ว่าเรากล่าวสรรเสริญสรรเสริญด้วยเช่น Lord Brahma is just he's just describing Lord Krishna's attractive features and then he describes Krishna's abode and you know it, it, Lord Brahma is just giving descriptions about Krishna พระพรหมนะคะท่านได้สรรเสริญเกี่ยวกับพระตำหนักทิพย์ของพระชนะพระวรกายความสง่างามของพระองค์ But at the end of each verse he says Govinda Madhi Purusham Tamaham but I worship Govinda the prayer so it's a prayer แล้วในทุกในตอนจบของทุกสโลกเนี่ยท่านก็จะบอกว่าข้าพเจ้าแสดงความเคารพต่ององค์ Govinda So we do have many prayers within our tradition, and we encourage the devotees also to sing these prayers and recite these prayers regularly. One prayer which is very well, one prayer which is very well known is the prayer we say before we take prasadam. แล้วก็อีกบทมนต์หนึ่งที่มีความสำคัญมากๆก็คือบทมนต์ที่เราเนี่ยจะท่องก่อนที่เราจะรับประทานพระสารามอ่าเมื่อเราเซชารีราวิจิจาวอินสเปนกอลีเปนกอลีภาษาพระเยซูแต่เราเป็นช่วยให้เราสูญเสียสมาธิสมาธิของร่างกายเพราะฉะนั้นบทมนต์นี้เนี่ยเป็นบทมนต์จากภาษาเบงกอลีนะคะแต่ว่าเป็นสิ่งที่ช่วยเราให้เราเนี่ยเอ่อให้ความคิดที่เป็นวัตถุของเราเนี่ย Because, because we often think of prasadam as something just for satisfaction of our tongue, so we need to say this kind of this kind of, this prayer to help us to understand that this is special. This is spiritual food. <laughs> And chanting Hare Krishna is a prayer. It's a prayer, and it's also the answer to our prayer. Because we're we're praying to Krishna that O oh, Supreme Lord Krishna, please engage me in your service. เพราะว่าเป็นการขอพรแบบที่เราจะกล่าวขอพระชนะบอกว่าโอ้พระผู้เป็นเจ้าได้โปรดอนุญาตให้ข้าพเจ้าเนี่ยมีโอกาสในการรับใช้พระองค์ด้วยเถิด So Krishna is engaging us in His service because we're chanting His name. แล้วพระชนะก็จะให้โอกาสเราในการรับใช้พระองค์โดยการสวดพระนามพระนาม All right, Sri Devi, Madhuri, Gorangi, Sri Devi, Gorangi, Madhuri. Hare Krishna, Sri Devi, can you hear me? I think she's muted. She doesn't know, maybe. I'm not. I was not allowed to unmute just now. Thank you very much, Sri Lagu Maharaj. I've understood it. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you for the Thank question, Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. All right. Any other questions here tonight? Yes. Who is this? Rajasuya Prabhu. Rajasuya Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much for a wonderful discussion, Maharaj. I just wondering, the Bharat Maharaj was very uh, exalted devotee, and he still could not remember the Krishna at the time of death. So my question is, we are how can we remember at the end of the death for Krishna? Is there any chance if there is? Some chance. What percentage chance do we have? Well, I, I, ex oh, okay, Archana. The Reverend Ji got asked, "Nah, wa, yang chen, Bharat Mara, ni mah, ni chai Bharat Mara. Than nah, yiti ka kuang ma, ni, kuam jing ha, men sao ki di ma, le, tae ko yang tong pen kuang yu, ani ni, tham ai ting pen chen." We have to understand what happened to Bharat Maharaj. Yes, he was a very advanced devotee, but he got deviated and he got very involved with the deer. 
and he stopped all of his, it affected all of his meditation and all his concentration went on the deer. And that happened that he, he fell off the cliff and he just thought of the deer, so he had to become a deer. But because he was an advanced devotee, he could remember his previous life. So even though he was in the body of a deer, he could remember that how previous life he had been Bharat Maharaj and he'd renounced everything, but he'd made a great mistake, he got attached to the deer. So we have to be careful not to get attached. How, the, the, one other point is Bharat Maharaj was alone, no association. That's very dangerous. So devotees helped us to remember Krishna at the end of life. You see the example Madhavendra Puri. Madhavendra Puri usually traveled alone. But at the end of life, Ishwara Puri, one of his disciples, was there taking care of him and helping him to remember Krishna. So it's important, we need association, it will help us to, with association, they, they can help us to stay away from Maya, to stay out of Maya. Right? If you get the association of a deer, <laughs> then it's not a good help. So you have to get good association who can help you to stay in Krishna consciousness. It's very important for us at the time of death. Yes. Any other question? No other questions, I think. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Yogina. You have a question? Yes, Gurudev, from Yogi Dhamma. Thank you, Matushti. Gurudev, it says that, you know, a uh, lot says that we have to chant offenselessly without uh, to develop Krishna Prema, and then only one enters the abode of the house. Say, even at this stage, even if uh, out of one round, we chant quarter or half of them uh, without offenses, but maybe subtly with offenses. Every time Buddha, when we hear classes or, you know, when devotees talk to each other, more than talking about focuses, focusing on there are chances, don't worry, you can chant without offenses, we'll make it. Everybody just pushes and concentrates on, oh my God, we cannot make it, we can't do chanting without offenses. Everybody really just diverts the mind towards how offensive one can be. So Gurudev, under such conditions, how is it possible also for one to, you know, any possibility that maybe nearing the time of death, one actually becomes 
chance of cancer uh, without cancer? Archana? มันจะมีก็ถามว่านะคะเอ่อในปัจจุบันนะคะเราสวดมนต์ในแต่ว่าสิ่งนี้ค่ะจะถ้าเรากระทําแบบนี้ไปเรื่อยๆจะสามารถช่วยเราได้มั้ยในตอนสุดท้ายของชีวิต Well we have to keep practicing you may say it's very difficult to chant without offense but you just keep practicing keep trying to improve and Krishna will help you แล้วสิ่งนี้จะต้องทําก็คือเราต้องพยายามพัฒนาต่อไปแล้วเดี๋ยวคริชนาจะช่วย One, uh, I heard a story from devotees from Mumbai. They, they were in the temple in Mumbai and, the, you know, uh, one night there was a, a lot of trembling and there was going to be an earthquake and everyone was very afraid. And so in the middle of the night they all ran out into the outside because they were afraid. The buildings were shaking. They thought everything's going to fall down. So of course everyone was afraid that the ground is going to open up and they're all going to die. So the devotees said it was the best chanting they ever did. They chanted the best songs they ever did. <laughs> so when we're in that life-threatening situation, sometimes it helps us to be more serious in our Krishna consciousness. <laughs> But you have to have made an effort, you have to have the habit of thinking of Krishna. Otherwise, when the crisis comes, you won't think of Krishna. So, understood, Gurudev. Okay. Understood. Uh, understood. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. So you have to keep practicing, then gradually, gradually, you know, mm -hmm. you get, keep attached, we'll get some attachment for the holy name. Gurudev, I am to somewhat, to be honest, attached, but I just get a bit, you know, I become a bit uh, worried when everybody starts saying, no, but it's not possible. I mean, we, we all are at the stage of Anatha Nivriti and it is so difficult to get beyond it, it's like, you know, everybody keeps on stressing on that, then you get a bit down, thinking, okay, all right, so, you know, it's, uh, sometimes it really gets you down, uh, people keep on really just putting that point, that it's not possible at this stage. And I feel like saying, no, 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 I should not just, but I'll keep your words in mind, Guru, that no, I'll just keep that thought in mind. When it has to be firm, then with love, just keep on trying. No matter what, keep on trying. Okay, thank you. Yes, keep trying. Thank you, Guru. Okay, I see Vaishnava Vani has a hand up. Do you have a question, Vaishnavi? Yes, Guru Mukhasari, Krishna. My question is, uh, how Vanama Sangeetana is the best of all the process? Uh, and uh, Nama Sangeetana means, uh, is that uh, sitting together and uh, singing Hare Krishna Mantra? Wanted to know more about this. Uh-huh. Archana? 
คำถามของมาตีนะคะถามว่าเราบอกว่านามสันเกตันนะคะถึงเป็นเป็นวิธีที่ดีที่สุดกว่าบันกว่าพิธีอื่นๆเนี่ยทำไมถึงเป็นเช่นนั้นอยากอยากจะรู้เพิ่มเติมเกี่ยวกับตรงนี้ Yes, this is a fact that the Nam Sankirtan, the chanting of the holy name and Kirtan with devotees, is very powerful. Because when we do the chanting properly, then all the other aspects of devotional service are included in the Kirtan. Just like when we chant nicely, then we're not only chanting, but we're also hearing, and we're not only hearing, but we're remembering Krishna. And the chanting, I said, it's a prayer. So we're also offering prayers by chanting. And we're performing bhakti yoga. We're chanting the holy name as a service for Krishna. So we're offering our chanting as a service for the pleasure of Krishna. So if we have the right attitude, all of the different limbs of bhakti yoga are included within the chanting of the holy name. So chanting the Sankirtan is very very important. In all our programs, we always have some. There must always be some kirtan. Is it clear, Vaishnavi? Yes. Okay, Nanda Braj Prabhu has a question. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Nanda Prana. Maharaj, just we heard from you, like in also in Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavata, many places, like Antakali Chamami. So, what we remember in the, at, the, at the end of our life, like last breath? We go to that the destinations, but sometimes we can see in Iskon we have many like uh, activities and uh, many departments. Uh, some are in management part, some are in like uh, chart account, uh, chart, uh, some are different part, and some are like uh, like worshiping duties. Some are like different different teaching part. Some some kirtans. We have many departments, and. In this, there are some like uh, like chart accounts. Like they they doing seva for the uh, Lakshmi for many times. In this, they engage this seva, and they are like this. On what will be their destination at the other time by doing this seva, this kind of seva? Uh, เราก็จะมีสาวกเนี่ยที่ได้รับหน้าที่การการทําการรับใช้เนี่ยแตกต่างกันออกไปบางคนก็อยู่ในส่วนของการแจกจ่ายพระนามบางคนก็อยู่ในส่วนของการบูชาพระปฏิมาหรืออะไรอย่างนี้ใช่ไหมคะจุดมุ่งหมายของพวกเขาเนี่ยหมายถึงว่าจุดหมายปลายทางของพวกเขาสูงสุดเนี่ยคือเขาจะได้อะไร So everything depends on the attitude it's not just the service alone but it's the attitude, the mood which they have in performing the service. If one is actually doing it in an endeavor to try to please Krishna, then it's nice, that's bhakti yoga. And as we said, whatever one remembers at the time of death, it will depend on what he's been thinking throughout his life. 
what he thinks regularly in his life will come into his mind at the time of death. So one may be an accountant and he's think, doing that count, says it's all right. But if he's thinking that I'm just, he's just simply thinking of money, money, and he's not thinking of Krishna and not thinking it's Krishna's money, then it won't help him. It won't be very good. He has to understand this is Krishna's money. I'm taking care of it for Krishna. I'm doing it for Krishna. He has to be thinking that the temple is Krishna's temple. I'm maintaining the temple on behalf of Krishna. I'm a servant of Krishna. And so Krishna will understand what is the nature of the person at the, and he will arrange the suitable birth in the next life. You cannot just judge by the activity only. We have to see the consciousness. Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay, so I think we can stop here tonight. Yes, you did. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Yeah. Go back to Brinda Ki. Yeah. Hare Krishna.